Welcome back to The Wire. Like I said, and y'all all know, Marshall Hughes is out, but with us is a special guest, Len Hayward from the MRT. Len, thanks for being in tonight. What do we got on the menu for Shot Clock? Well, we got the Cowboys expectations, Bob Bowlesby and Jose Canseco still trying to get into the news. Oh my goodness. <laughs> let's go. Let's begin. Hey guys, let's start it off with America's team. With training camp starting this past week, kickoff for the NFL season not far off. So, what are your expectations, if any, for the Dallas Cowboys this year? Is this the season Jerry Jones gives Jason Garrett the ax if Dallas fails to make the playoffs? Expectations, Lynn, I've come to learn as a Cowboy fan, I really don't have any. Eight and eight the past three years. I mean, listen, it's funny because I feel like Jason Garrett has been given a lot more time than normal Cowboys coaches have. I mean, after Barry Switzer, remember the name Dave Campbell? How many years did he have? Oh, just, just one? I mean, right. Dallas Cowboys, it's all going to come down to the defense. We know that they can score. Tony Romo's got the best offensive line he's ever had in his tenure there. Uh, it's On paper, at least, it's as, almost as good as the Cowboys of yore with the Super Bowl ones. It's all coming down to that defense, though. We got Anthony Spencer coming back. That's probably the biggest piece. Henry Melton, their biggest addition. Outside of that, though, secondary-wise, they didn't fix too much at all, if any. I don't have any expectations. As, as a Cowboys fan, yeah, the NFC East is semi-wide open, not the biggest competition-wise. We'll see, though. That's, all, that's, that's the, the mystique about Dallas, though. You never know what you're going to get from week to week, and I guess that's what Jerry's all about, right? Just tune in. Yeah, you have to tune in, but the, the one thing you have to understand is that they have been 8-8 eight and eight for the last three years, and if you're a, and if you're a, a smart Cowboy fan, you've got to expect 8-8 eight and eight or 9-7 and seven again. If you're not a smart Cowboy fan, you're still thinking <laughs> Super Bowl. But with the way the NFL works is the fact that you can go from 8-8 eight and eight to the Super Bowl in a year depending on how things fall. If the Cowboys are able to stop some people, keep Tony Romo healthy, and and be able to run the football like they need to. And that's been one of the things about Jason Garrett that people have complained about. Mm. The Cowboys should be able to compete in the NFC East, and they're going to be able to compete in that division. The question is, can they find the consistency they need on a week-to-week -week basis to be able to win the games they need to win to get into the postseason, and when they get into the postseason, to win some games there. And the key also, let's not forget this health. After Romo, who do we got? Whedon? Uh, I'm still scarred from his tenure as a, <laughs> as a Brown. That's That was pretty painful. But then I, again. I think Brandon is a very capable backup. I, mm -hmm. I do think they did well in picking up Brandon Whedon. I think he's a very capable backup. And if Romo does have to sit out one or two games, I think he's going to be okay. If Romo has to sit out an extended period of time, they could be in trouble. But they have to get the running game going to take mm -hmm. some pressure off of Tony and his back so where he's not having to run around and take chances like he has. People like to call Tony Romo a gambler. He's a gambler because he has to be. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in a game with Denver and you're in a shootout with Peyton Manning, he's got to take chances because he knows his defense isn't going to be able to stop them. If they can make some stops along the way and win some games, they'll be able to make the playoffs. New offensive coordinator Scott Linehan will see what happens, right? I guess I'm not a big fan of Scott Linehan, but we'll have to see what happens. Maybe he, maybe this is the, this is the change he needs, and maybe this is the change Tony Romo needs. We'll see. Okay, second question, going to Big 12 ball. Commissioner Bob Bowlesby sure had a lot on his mind opening day of the Big 12 media day. What do you make of his comments regarding the state of the NCAA? Yeah, Bob Bowlesby definitely had a mouthful to say. <laughs> Let me just uh, go over what he said on the Dan Patrick Show to clarify himself some things that caught my eyes and ears. Okay, so we've got 350 schools, Lynn, in Division I sports overall. And talk about just getting them all in one room to talk about things. That's tough enough for a meeting, right? It's What's a, what's a good decision for one set of school, like a la the Big Five, is not good for another one. And when I talk about Big Five, I mean the Big Five conferences. We've got Pac-12, Big Ten, Big 12, ACC, and, of course, the SEC. These guys are the shot callers of the league. I mean, yeah, they're all Division I, but let's be real. 90% of them go on to win the titles. They have the real say in the matter. They're the ones bringing in the most of the revenue, talking about basketball and football, obviously. The 65, yeah, the 65 schools in the, in the top five conferences win 90%. It's not up to the conference commissioners to necessarily try and or to elect to secede, but guess what? Bowlesby did say in this interview that they have talked about it. Kind of scary stuff. Scary stuff. Yeah, yeah it is, but I think <laughs> this all boils down to the presidents of each one of those 65 universities. Uh -huh. And if those presidents can come together with some sort of an agreement to be able to go to the NCAA, either they do it themselves or they do it within the model of the NCAA, you will see something different in regards to those big five conferences when 
over the next couple of years. I think something's going to happen, and it, and it boils down to compensation for athletes. Mm -hmm. One thing to remember, though, is Title IX. Yeah. Even though you, even though the football and base basketball programs bring in the lion's share of the money. Even if you if you give something to that football player, you still got to be able to give something to that wrestler, to that volleyball player, to that swimmer. You cannot do with the way Title IX is written. You have to be able to to do that for all the other sports. And Title IX specifically, it, it, it talks about women's sports. But the one thing I think they're trying to do, and I think Bowlesby was giving a veiled shot at the SEC with the cheating oh, yeah. remark. But I think what they want to try to do with the compensation is take away the temptation to cheat. And is it still going to happen? Yes. If you think there's no cheating in college sports or very little, <laughs> you're very little, you're very naive. But I think what they want to try to do with this compensation and being able to give student athletes or with your athletes that are students, you know, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. some kind of compensation to be able to do something different beyond their scholarship, then that's the kind of stuff that's going to happen. But there are people who are arguing that scholarship should be enough for them. That's the argument they're going to have to have, and that's what the presidents are going to have to hash out because some presidents are going to say that scholarship are going to be, is going to be enough. Others are going to say it's not enough, and that's where you're going to have to do it. But I still think those 65 schools you mentioned, mm -hmm. mentioned are going to break away some way from the rest of the NCAA because they don't want those smaller schools dictating to them how much money they get. Yeah, interesting times ahead, Led, definitely. Yes, there is. And finally, last weekend, the Oakland A's held a 25th reunion of their 1989 World Series. Missing was Mark McGuire, who has gone on to say he wants nothing to do with Jose Canseco after he accused him of using steroids in his 2005 book. Nine years later, should McGuire still hold a grudge? You know, there's that old adage, time heals all wounds. I mean, listen, <laughs> if, he, if he thinks that Jose Canseco was the reason he got busted, I'm sorry, it's not. I understand, you know, baseball has this old uh, Cosa Nostra, you know, Code of Amerta <laughs> kind of thing. Right. But at the same time, it's, come on, man, it would've, he would have been busted anyways. They had some good times in Oakland. And sure, Mark McGuire has every reason to feel betrayed by him, but just don't burn a bridge on a friendship. Come on, these guys had great times. They won a World Series, Lynn. I mean, can you forget that? Uh, they probably won't, but should <laughs> he should he still hold a grudge? No, but will he? Probably. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think the, there's a there's a code in the in the baseball clubhouse that is very it's it's very similar to the NFL locker room. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to hockey locker rooms. Um, it's very similar to even to basketball locker rooms. There's stuff that happens in the locker room that should stay in the locker room. But when you're talking about something of the magnitude which Jose Canseco brought to the forefront with his book, and I th still think he was selfish. He needed the dollar. Doing, yeah, yeah. He needed the dollar and he needed to do it. But should he hold a grudge? No. Will he? Yes. You know, they had they had some good times together. The the fact of the matter is, it's all out in the open now. Baseball is trying to test for it. Guys are still getting busted for it. So, guys are going to do what they can to get an edge. You know, but the fact but the thing is, you still have to hit the baseball, hit the hit a round baseball with a round bat. <laughs> you know, even though no matter what is in your body, and unless you're a bionic robot, you know that can that can put your eye on that ball. You still got to hit the ball, you still got to catch the ball, and you still got to throw the ball. Did it help them? Yes, it did. But the fact of the matter is you still have to be able to do that on a day-in, day-out basis. And I, it's they're bringing up old news, and, you know, I think Canseco's trying – probably Canseco's trying to keep himself in the news. Exactly, <laughs> right. As much yeah. As anything. Yeah, definitely, right. Good luck, Jose. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn, for joining Matthew, and we will see you back here next week. Thank you, Daryl, and thank you, Lynn, for being with us in Shot Clock. We greatly appreciate it. Hopefully more times ahead. And when we get back, we've got some more wire coming your way. Stay tuned.